Welcome back to the world today. Seven people are dead, including a 10-year-old girl, after Russian missiles struck Ukraine's southern Odessa region and Kharkiv in the northeast. The Wednesday night attack fell on Odessa's Liberation Day, a day the city marks her freedom from the Nazis during World War II. Shortly after the night strike, power infrastructure came under attack in five regions from more than 40 missiles and 40 drones. Ukrainian officials have accused Russian forces of targeting civilians with double-tap tactics, where a missile strike is followed by a second, which aims to kill emergency service personnel arriving at the scene. The European foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, claims the possibility of a high-intensity conventional war in Europe is no longer a fantasy, and allies must do everything to avoid it. He was addressing the Nueva Economia Forum in Brussels on Tuesday, emphasizing that peace building requires more than nice words, and it is necessary to engage with the rest of the world in reducing these turbulences. And the Ukraine conflict is a threat to the EU, even though Ukraine is not yet a member. He even emphasized that Ukraine needed both anti-air defense capabilities and that the best way to help the country in its reconstruction is to avoid destruction. Ukraine requires more support. We cannot, we cannot deny the reality. And the reality is that the rising competition among big powers, high-intensity conflicts between states, weaponization of economic interdependency, cyber warfare and disinformation, is our part of our reality. War becomes a threat, and we have to look at that. We have a look at that, uh, sharing with the rest of the world the capacity to continue building peace, because it remains our purpose. But we need something more than nice words. We need some more that um, trying to shelter ourselves from the turbulence of the world. We have to try to engage with the rest of the world on reducing these turbulences. And this means to build a stronger foreign policy and a stronger defense capacity. Trade is not enough. The core of sovereignty, foreign affairs and defense, this is the core of sovereignty, was left in the hands of the state. When you look at the institutional architecture of the European Union, foreign policy and defense remains a national competence. You know because the war in Ukraine has brutally revealed the world as it is and not as we wanted it to be. UK Foreign Secretary Lord David Cameron wants the US Congress to pass the $95 billion aid package for Ukraine. He has been in the United States this week and has with this Ukraine, uh, the war in Ukraine, bigger part, it has been the main topic of discussion. He's also confirmed UK arms sales to Israel will not be suspended either. Perhaps nothing is more important than the supplemental that the Congress is looking at at the moment. And I come here with um, no intention to lecture anybody or tell anybody what to do or get in the way of the process of politics and other things in the United States. I just come here as a great friend and believer of, in this country and a believer that it's profoundly in your interests uh, and your security and your future and the future of all your partners to release this money. Dinner, I'm not going to relent from the fact that it was a private dinner, but we discussed geopolitical issues like Israel and Gaza, like Ukraine, uh, like the future of NATO. Um, look, whoever I'm talking to, I tend to make the same points, which is that you know we've got to do everything we can this year um, to get NATO in its strongest possible shape for its 75th anniversary and getting everyone up to 2%. Uh, having the new members joining Sweden and Finland, having the strongest possible alliance, that's the best thing we can do on Ukraine. The best thing we can do this year is to help keep the Ukrainians in this fight. They're fighting so bravely, they're not going to lose for want of morale. 
the danger is we don't give them the support that they need. And I make that argument to anyone who will um, listen to me. I argue that it is uh, extremely good value for money for the United States and for others, um, perhaps for about 5 or 10% of your defense budget. Almost half of Russia's pre-war military equipment has been destroyed for, without the loss of a single uh, American life. This is an investment in United States security. Meanwhile, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg is once again calling for more ally support for Ukraine, indicating the situation in the front line is difficult. The NATO chief made this known at a joint press conference with the Finnish president, Alexander Stubb, in Brussels. For the Finnish president, whose country became the 31st member of NATO last year, said allies identified Russia as their major Today, security threat, stressing the need to double Ukraine, its border security the with the country. Uh, is... In our meeting, we discussed uh, Ukraine and the urgent need uh, for uh, more uh, support and reliable and predictable support for Ukraine, uh, because the situation on the battlefield uh, is uh, difficult. Uh, delays in funding are having direct consequences on the uh, ground every day. Delays in delivery of air defenses will allow Russian missiles to hit uh, more uh, targets. And delays in delivery of ammunition will allow Russia to press along the front line. Ukraine uh, simply cannot wait. Uh, it needs air defenses, ammunition and aid now. Conversation with the Secretary General, I stress the fact, obviously, that the alliance has now doubled its border with Russia. And if and when the alliance defines its number one security threat as being Russia, we in Finland fully realize uh, our responsibility for the alliance. My aim as president and our aim as Finland uh, is to be a loyal, constructive and responsible partner because as you mentioned, when we didn't join NATO in the early 1990s, a decision was taken that we would continue our obligatory conscription. Uh, as a consequence, we have 900,000 men and women who've undergone military training, and we have 280,000 men and women that can be mobilized at, at wartime. At the same time, we are one of the few countries in the alliance that has long-range uh, missiles in the land, air, uh, and sea. We also have the second largest artillery uh, in Europe, actually together with Poland. Um, so my message to all of our allies here today is that you can trust us. Okay. Okay.